So Bitcoin Cash has been pumping lately. Is that good for Casper? Is that bad for Casper? You stick around and I'll give you my two cents. Hello, hello, and welcome to What is Crypto? I'm Matt, and this is Crypto. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about both Casper and Bitcoin Cash. But firstly, a little bit about my channel. Here I give to the point crypto information and education and talk all things crypto. I like to keep things short and sweet as time is money and money is more coins and tokens to fill up those bags. So if that sounds like it could be for you, then smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and let's get into it. Just quickly though, I really wanna give you a token of my appreciation. I'm a super small channel, but this number has grown quite a lot recently. I'm still probably much like you working my full-time job and I've been grinding out the overtime over the past 18 months to really set myself up for the future. So I really appreciate the support. I love seeing you guys down in the comments section. I appreciate it, I appreciate you. Now let's get into it. Firstly, bit of a history lesson. So what is Bitcoin Cash? Well, Bitcoin Cash is a hard fork of Bitcoin. It was created by some of the early miners of Bitcoin who identified the fact that although Bitcoin set out to be a peer-to-peer -peer payment mechanism, due to its limited block size, it was gonna run into issues if it garnered mass adoption globally. There'd be too many transactions on the network which would make transactions too expensive and too slow. So a group of them got together and they hard forked Bitcoin. So in essence, they changed the Bitcoin code and thus Bitcoin Cash was born. I'll play you a little clip from the crypto lark. Bitcoin Cash is a hard fork of Bitcoin, which was created when it split from the main Bitcoin chain back in 2017. Bitcoin Cash was created to allow for more transactions to go into a single block and thus to make fees lower and to decrease transaction times. Like Bitcoin, it has a hard cap of 21 million coins and uses proof of work to secure the network. Bitcoin Cash has largely failed to gain any kind of real adoption with very few users, little interest from merchants, critically weak support from miners. I personally see very little hope for it in the future. Going back over that, it is similar to Bitcoin. It's a proof of work, although it is a hard fork of Bitcoin. So an alteration of the initial Bitcoin code to increase the block size, which would therefore increase the transaction speed and decrease the cost. This is good in theory. However, due to its minimal adoption and limited mining support, the network is significantly less secure than Bitcoin and therefore it hasn't performed too well in the past. Having a look at its chart, you can see in 2018, it had a price of just under $4,000. In 2021, it had a price of $1,500. And now in 2024, it has a price of $638. So why are we talking about it? Well, if you look at it on the three monthly, Bitcoin Cash has been pumping recently. Now, if this is a dinosaur coin, why has this been pumping recently? Well, that's due to its halving. So similarly to Bitcoin, it has a halving every four years where the block rewards for miners are cut in half. It decreases the total supply that is put out onto the open market. A decreased supply, in theory at least, equates to an increased demand if the demand stays the same, therefore an increase in price. So I guess I'm bringing this up to highlight the importance of the halving on a proof of work such as Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Looking at Bitcoin Cash on TradingView, previously Bitcoin Cash, after its halving has increased significantly in price and we've just had a halving around here. So will we break this trend line and go to the upside? Well, that remains to be seen. If we do though, I think that is super bullish for proof of works as I think institutional money might be looking at a cheaper version of Bitcoin. Now, I don't think Bitcoin Cash is going to be that, although it might get some interest in the short term. I think it's still pretty old. The technology just really isn't as good. It's also not as desirable as Bitcoin as Bitcoin has the first mover advantage. It has significantly more mining security and a significantly wider adoption. So looking at Bitcoin and how Bitcoin performs with the halvings, you can see that post halving, it's always been met with a very aggressive price movement to the upside. Initially, there might be a little bit of a dip. However, 12 to 18 months following halving, there's always been explosive price action. And another project that you might have heard of that also has a halving in place is Casper. I don't know if you've heard of that one, but if you have, Let's have a little bit of a look. Casper has a halving. However, the halving is different in the fact that it's not once every four years, it's every single month. They call it a chromatic halving. And looking at the Casper halving schedule, you can see that there is a decrease every month, which equates to every 12 months, there being a 50% decrease in the total amount of Casper emitted. So looking initially, there was 1,314,900,000 Casper mined per month. 
which equates to roughly 500 Casper per second. Coming up to present day, we can now see that Casper has around 306 million Casper mined per day, which equates to roughly 116 a second, significantly less than the initial 500 per second. Scrolling on, you can see that this cuts down significantly year on year which further decreases the supply on the open market and a decreased supply if there's a steady or increased demand should equate to an increased price value. Looking at Casper on the chart, I've been talking about this channel that we've been in since all the way back where my initial entry was under the two cent mark in around June. I've been buying though, however, every time we get to the bottom end of this channel and every time we get up to the top end, I haven't been selling, but I haven't been accumulating anymore. We're now in a fairly attractive buy price. Looking at the bottom of the channel, we still haven't come down our 38%, which is historically what we've done over the past year. Every time we get to the upper ends of this channel, we have a 30% decrease, chop around for a bit, and then rock it up. 38% decrease, chop around a bit, and then rock it up. 38% decrease, chop around a bit, and then hopefully rock it up. New trend line though that I've just noticed is from here, and you can see that we are bouncing off this uh, something that I'm going to keep a little bit of an eye on. We have a significant amount of support in this purple support channel, and I think that Casper is going to do super well. That is just a little bit my two cents on Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin and Casper. I think in general, in summary, what I'm trying to say is the proof of work narrative is still something that excites the market. People are still excited by proof of work coins. People see that they do have a real value. And I think as fiat is gradually phased out year on year, and by phased out, I mean with inflation increasing and your money buying you less and less and less, people are gonna start looking to put their money in things that can't be printed out of existence. So in Australia, we've got the Australian dollar, and if you're looking at the price of a loaf of bread, and you're looking at what $1, $10, $100 could buy you compared to what it could buy you five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, there's no comparison. You look at some people that 20 years ago bought a house for really a packet of chips, and that's not to complain because everyone in their own day had their own struggles, and we have a lot of advantages in these days, such is being pretty early in a pretty exciting space that is crypto with a special interest on Casper. I think Casper is going to do super well. I'm bullish on it. I'm not selling. I've got a pretty big bag. And when we're in ranges like this, I do like to accumulate. Quick little peep at Bitcoin. We are looking pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised if we do have another drop. However, that is an accumulation time, not a time to be selling. All you can really do is go on history and how the markets have performed in the past to have the best educated guess at where the markets might be going in the future. Past markets don't necessarily indicate that future markets will repeat the same patterns, but there's often a lot of similarities that can be drawn. For me personally, I'm looking at price actions after the halvings and looking at that where we are at the moment, it's something that really excites me. And I'm definitely pretty much all in the crypto market at the moment. Thank you so much, Legends, for watching. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you. Drop a comment down below. Chuck me a like and let me know what you want to hear. Do you want to hear more about how I would build a portfolio with 10 grand, 20 grand, how I would go about investing in certain niches such as AI, gaming, what I'm investing in now, what I'm thinking about investing in the future, short-term trades, meme coins. Yeah, let me know what you want to hear about. Also, just quickly again, thank you so much for all the support. The channel's still so Super small, but we're growing. I love to see you guys in the comments. I've got some regulars down there now. I know who you are and I really do bloody appreciate you. So thank you so much for all the love you've been showing and I'll catch you in the next one.